Hey guys, Andy here and welcome to this video. What I wanted to cover is how to reduce the displayed average noise level on your spectrum analyzer so that you can see much, much smaller signals. Now I've noticed this problem come up a lot when I'm working with customers who have some in-house test capability and they're trying to recreate uh, what an external accredited test lab is doing during uh, a radiated emissions test. And, and often um, the customer won't be able to find the signal that they're looking for. So say there's an emission at 200 megahertz, they've seen it on the report from the test lab, and now they're back at their office and they can't find the emission so that they can you know, ideally work on mitigation and, and fixing and improving that emission. So in this video, I'm just gonna cover three simple things um, that you can do with your spectrum analyzer to, to view smaller signals. So the first thing that you can do is reduce the internal attenuation on your analyzer. Now often, um, typically this is set to auto. Now the auto setting may default to 20 dB or 30 dB. Um, typically an analyzer will detect what signal's coming in. Maybe it'll add more for protection and prevent the, um, prevent the detector from being overloaded. Typically it's in the, in the range of 10 to 30 dB. So what we can do is we can switch over to manual and we can reduce it from 30 to 20 to 10 and um, we can even go to zero on most analyzers. And what you'll notice is that the noise floor uh, correspondingly reduces in amplitude as well. So at 30 dB, perhaps you've got an emission that's below that noise floor and as you drop it 10, 10 and another 10, you'll begin to see that emission pop up. Now taking a look at that on the screen, what I'm doing is I'm feeding in uh, minus 80 dBm, it's just a sine wave at 200 megahertz. And on my analyzer, I'm set to 200 megahertz center frequency with a span of five megahertz. And now all I'm gonna do is vary the RF attenuation. So it's initially set to 30 dB. I'm just gonna press down, 20. As you can see, the noise floor keeps lowering and you can now see the signal pop above the noise floor. So if I do marker peak, there's my minus 80 dBm signal and I can keep going with my RF attenuation. It's blocking me from going down below five, but I can just do zero. And now I have a nice clear signal above the noise floor and that's what we want. So that's one simple thing you can do. Another one is uh, to reduce the resolution bandwidth. Now, when we're dealing with troubleshooting and pre-compliance, we're not so concerned about maintaining uh, EMI bandwidths of 120 kilohertz or one megahertz or nine kilohertz for some measurements. We can really do what we want with the resolution bandwidth. And what we can do is we can reduce it, which has the effect of reducing the noise floor. So if we go from one meg down to 100 kilohertz, um, what you'll notice is that the, the noise floor, the displayed noise floor, uh, reduces by about 10 dB. Same from 100 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz and same from 10 kilohertz to one kilohertz. So by reducing RBW, we can drastically reduce the, the displayed noise floor and that allows the signal that we're trying to measure to, to pop up above the noise floor. So now we're looking at the resolution bandwidth option. Uh, we're set to one megahertz here, and you'll notice that the internal attenuation is set to zero. All I'm gonna do is reduce the resolution bandwidth from one meg to 300K, and you'll see that the signal is kind of just showing through here. I'll keep reducing it. You'll see the noise floor keeps going down. 10 kilohertz now, three kilohertz, one kilohertz. And the measurement slows down, but that's okay. If it gets too slow, you can always reduce the, the span of the measurement. Um, but it's not, it's not too bad at this. It's only uh, a quarter of a second to do a sweep on this analyzer. Uh, but as you can see at one kilohertz resolution bandwidth, 
we get a really nice low noise floor and we can see the signal without a problem. And the final thing I want to mention is that a lot of analyzers have internal preamplifiers. So if you have one of those, sometimes it's buried in a bunch of menus, but if you have a look at your utilities or often it's in the amplitude menu, have a look in there and you'll see if it, it has a, an internal preamp option, in which case you can enable that. In this one, it's a 20 dB preamp. So when I switch it on, that noise floor pops down by approximately 20 dB. Now you have to be careful about overloading your detector. In this analyzer, I'm lucky it tells me if it's being overloaded, um, but it, in other analyzers where they don't have that kind of detection, you have to be a bit careful um, to make sure A, that you don't do any damage, and B, even if it's not doing damage, it can distort your signal. So you have to be careful um, that you're, you're not feeding in very high amplitude um, signals with no attenuation and an internal preamp um, enabled as well. But if you're just feeding in low level signals and you know that's true, then you're fine with zero dB attenuation and you're fine with uh, turning your, your amp on. And if you don't have an internal amplifier option in your, in your spectrum analyzer, don't worry about it. They're not particularly expensive. You can just get an external one and do the amplification before it hits your, your analyzer and that should get you, you know, 20 dB, 30 dB extra headroom uh, to measure extremely small signals. And for the final example here, I just want to show you the noise floor with the preamp on and off. So right now it's off and now it's on. So that, that gets us about 20 dB extra noise floor there. And you can see that it doesn't make a difference to the amplitude of the signal. It just really gives you some extra noise floor there. So that's just three really simple things you can do to improve your noise floor by, in some cases, 30, 40, 50 dB, um, and you can measure those, those tiny signals. There's a, there are a lot more things you can do. Uh, I've just written an article that goes through 12 items, include, including these three. Uh, if you want to read through that, there's a link below, uh, below this video. But uh, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next one.